Oh, girl, a regular read of the latest LGBT plus trends, TV, and the ever-expanding world of drag. Hello there, I'm the Velvet Snatch, and welcome to this, what is it, is it really, season five of Girl. Well, it's been a while, and it's wonderful that we're going to kick it off to such a brilliant start. However, you might notice that my voice is sounding a little more husky than usual, and that's because I was a screaming queen for an entire Pride weekend. So, we're still quite recovering, all three of us. So, let's get straight into it. Who am I joined by today? It is, of course, Thotter Stew. Hi, Dad. Nice to see you. It's been a while. How's things? How's the kids? How's the egg? <laughs> Has it been that long that I'm now a daddy? Have I ascended? Like, I think I saw you less than like 72 hours ago, so honestly, better than my actual dad. <laughs> you will call me father. <laughs> and of course, Jim Bunny Glenn. I'm feeling very jealous. That's Stu knows who his dad is. <laughs> I can also talk. Do you want to know who yours is as well? Because he calls me dad. Wow. <laughs> that, that's the most northern sentence I've ever heard. Jeremy Cut. Jeremy Cut. <laughs> and of course, what would girl be without an amazing special guest to kick off the start of a new season? We are joined with drag race royalty and all stars royalty. It is, of course, Pandora Box. How are you doing, my dear? I'm good. How are you? I feel better than I sound, I think. I think I... <laughs> I. You'd assume that I, like, sound... I feel like a worn-out tire by the way I sound, but... <laughs> at least I just well, look I, like I, that, rubbery. <laughs> my voice is not totally there either, because I did drag con this past weekend and still haven't fully recovered. <laughs> how, how did it go? Was it fun? Or was it, well, it's always that thing where you either hear people being like, oh, it was lots of fun, or it was lots of work. <laughs> um, it was lots of work, but it's, it's always great to meet people and that, to see how excited they are to meet you and excited for drag and how much fun they're having. So I think I have fun vicariously through other people. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It must be really difficult to sort of, you know, go like, oh, I'm having a crap day when you've got people coming up to you being like, oh, you're amazing and I love you and stuff. It's like, oh, well, hello, validation. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot. I drank a lot of Red Bull to get, get me some false energy so I could be peppy when I was talking to people. <laughs> that's a good plan. Right. OK, let's dive straight into the slightly unsubtle promotion. Now, you've just released a new album, right? Can, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, my first ever album, and it's cleverly titled Box. I mean, it took me a long time to really figure that one out. But, um, um, well, I, I kind of wanted to play up the whole Pandora's Box Greek mythology angle, and I'm really happy and proud of it. And it took a long time to finish it, and now it's now I've released it unto the world. Well, was it difficult? Was it like letting the chick out of the nest or whatnot? Yeah, it was kind of weird because I've had, uh, like, it's been almost finished for a while. So, like, I, and we were just trying to figure out a, a good date to release it. Yeah, and then when it's out, like, now that it's out, it's, it is kind of a little weird to be like, <laughs> oh, wow, people are listening to this album that I spent, like, three years making. That's wild. Three whole years is a long time. Where did you, yeah. sort of, where did you get your sort of influences and inspiration for the album over the course of three full years? Um, I think that, well, yeah. I, it wasn't steadily working on it for three years. It was kind of like, it just took different directions. And then my friend, Brandon, James Gwynn produced like eight of the tracks. And it was more when we started working together that it really started to take shape. And then it's kind of um, trying to figure out time to work. And he lives in New York. So I went to New York to, uh, and I'm in Los Angeles. So it was me going there to record the album. It was a process of trying to like write the songs and and I wanted them to be a little more meaningful than some of my other songs, which were about like penis and poop and <laughs> cooter. Shocking. So I was like, you know, maybe not that. Maybe I'll go a different direction this time. But I still wanted it to be like fun and dancing, not Mariah Carey or anybody. <laughs> Your song "Ridiculous" is always one of them ones that I always like have a like a good dance to in the car. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, originally that was going to go on the album too, but then it was it was came out so long ago at this point that 
you're like, mm, let's leave it off. Did you feel like you'd have to rework it for the the style of the album and be like, oh well, it's got to fit with these now, so we'd have to play around with it? Um, yeah, I can't. We like my uh, friend Brandon. He was just like, uh, he he didn't think that it kind of went with the album. So I was like, yeah, kind of went with All Star Six. So it's fine. I know that was like in 2021, which now I am just like, oh, wow, I can't believe I'm even older. <laughs> And now I'm so many se- now I'm so many seasons ago again. There's too many, too many seasons. Can't keep up with them. Oh yeah, I can't either. <laughs> so you've uh, put a couple of references to the iconic Carol Shannon on the album. Uh, do you feel that's always going to be a, a resting point within the memory of your career? Yes, <laughs> but I did. Uh, I wrote the song Raspberries, and I've tried to write one, like, for years to try to come up with something that never really worked. But this one, <clears throat> this one finally did work. And it's kind of like my ode to Carol Chan, my ode to my Carol Channing impersonation and kind of like a farewell, like, because I really don't want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that's it. That was the, that was the song on the album that I kind of, like, was like, what? the hell is this going on about like all the rest of them i got and then that one i was like oh it's carol channing okay cool and i was like that was it and i don't know how i didn't do that but it's because i didn't immediately associate you with that <laughs> like it seems to be me being yeah. the odd one out but uh well that's hey i'm i'm all right with that <laughs> but yeah it's definitely one of the weirder songs on the album <laughs> yeah but fun i i will have to say actually when i was listening to the album i was I don't know if this is like rude or an insult because it's not meant that way, but it is the most British album I have heard in a very, very long time. And I kept sort of Googling being like, wait, you are American, right? Yeah, I take that as a compliment because um, I always loved British comedy and I love the British sense of humor. So yeah, Yeah. I'm I'm good with that. It's really got that. It's literally, it feels so much like, uh, like, like a sort of, you know, that wonderful retro phase that we get in music where we're getting it at the moment with um, Good Luck Babe by, by Chapel Roan. Yes, yes, sir. Wait, you know that thing where you're just kind of going like, whoa, where they use these sort of like these kind of vintage synths and stuff like that. And this has this wonderful party vibe that I grew up with uh, across the whole thing. And you just go, this is just made for remixes and the dance floor and whatnot, especially the opening track dance. And I don't know. I just, it really resonated with me. And I really liked that. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but how about you? Like, which song on the album did you have the most fun writing and recording? Um, which, uh, well, <laughs> I know it was like three years ago and you're like, I can't remember writing that. I know that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the writing didn't happen three years ago. But we recorded it last year. We recorded the, the vocals for it. Um, well, a lot of that, I do like a lot of dadas and doodos and whatever, and I had to do that so many of them. I was like, oh my God, stop making me do these. But, um, I really enjoyed writing Pill. That was one of the first ones I wrote. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's got really personal lyrics, but it's kind of infused with, uh, Alice in Wonderland references. So, uh, that was kind of fun to write. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just like forced myself to write because I knew I had to write this album and I would just sip on my computer and have a cocktail and I listen to a lot of Robin and Sia and because they write really uh a lot of their songs are really depressing but they're all with a dance beat so that's kind of what I was <laughs> why I wanted I I think that's exactly what you managed to capture yeah I want to I mean I want people to dance and have fun because I don't want to take myself that seriously like I was not going to do like an album of ballads or anything so I was just like but how can I make this personal to me mm. <laughs> speaking of dancing and having fun have you had the opportunity to sort of perform much of it live yet and get sort of the crowd reaction um i did i did dance at drag con and um the audience liked it i, I uh <laughs> was kind of really nervous so i was i did a terrible thing that you shouldn't really do when you're performers i was kind of like well, the stage was really high, too, so the audience is low. So I was kind of looking above the audience because I was nervous. <laughs> I was like, I probably should have looked at people more, but, you know. But it was it was fun. I had two uh, dancers with me, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm totally a pop star, you guys. I, like, <laughs> have my backup dancers, and I'm ready. 
Well, speaking of backup, <laughs> if you could collaborate with another drag queen on a future album, who would you go to? Um, I mean, immediately I'm thinking Latrice Royale because we're friends and I, uh, that she would be great to collaborate with because she's got that, she's got that Latrice Royale voice. <laughs> It would be great to have her, to do something with her. Actually, I've got a question for it. Like, what inspired you for all the song titles to have them as one word? Was that something that just came, like, because you knew the album title already, or...? Um, I didn't know the album title already, but I... I don't know, I just really, in my mind, I'm like, I want all the titles to just be one word, and Brandon was like, mm, I'm not sure. And I was like, no, trust me. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. That's all kind of one word, and you kind of don't really know totally what to expect with each song. Yeah, I think that's quite good because we because I, I remember I was looking at the song titles, being like, "What on earth is this one about? What is Swish going to be like? You know, and like, what is Laugh going to be like?" And then you listen to it, and you're like, "Oh, okay, I get it." Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I the scurvy was one too that I'm like, "Oh, no one's gonna even." come close to guessing what this one's about i i, I absolutely <laughs> love scurvy where you just it's the most meta song i've heard in a very long time where you're like okay so i needed a pirate song right so that's what this is you know? <laughs> oh yeah and brandon thought i was crazy he was the one that produced it, <laughs> it it's, and i was like he came back with like this peppy song and i was like no i'm like it needs to be like more mellow and like kind of like you're riding on pirates of the caribbean and at disneyland <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I, I think that's it i think there's there's various points of the album where i'm like oh this is where the edibles kick in you know where you just like <laughs> but no it, it's a, it's a, I think it's absolutely great like just the sort of unashamed like here's what I'm writing a song about here's how I'm feeling kind of thing like we were saying about the lyrics and stuff and yeah I, I think it's right and ending the album with it we we're like yep I'm gonna close the album with my pirate song <laughs> yeah that exactly was the the sentiment of it too and we both agreed that it's like yeah this this one should be the the last song <laughs> No, that's absolutely amazing. So outside of producing an album, like what other drag antics have you been getting up to recently? Aside from drag con, obviously. Um, you know, it's just steadily working, which is good. And, you know, it's always the hustle of drag shows and trying to stay relevant. And mm. there's 15 seasons of drag race going on right now. And you know, how do you, how do you keep a voice in, within all of that? So. I really like that, though, that you're sort of making your own path, that you're kind of going like, oh, cool, cool. you know, like we're, we're doing all this, that's all steady, we're doing things like DragCon and whatnot, and the, like the standard appearances, but I'm also doing the stuff that I, I'm i really passionate about, like actually finishing an album, because it was this uh, this string of singles from you for a while, and then it's like going, oh, okay, we actually have an album now. Yeah, and I did a Kickstarter for it, which got funded in three days, which was kind of amazing, because yeah. I didn't know, and it's also kind of like, I was like, oh, I hate to like ask people for money, but if I want to want to do this album, I need money. So it was nice to have that luxury of having that money and having, you know, people that were supportive of the album. You know, what what about the rest of the year? Then there's still a few months left of it to go. Is there anything that you've sort of got planned? Any goals that you've got in mind? Uh, well, I'm hoping to do like a tour or a little tour with with tracks from the album and. Uh, I want to do a mix of like songs from the album, but then some stand-up comedy and uh, some uh, some stories. I like to tell stories sometimes, especially if I have a little vodka. Then you can't get me to stop telling stories. Are, are they are they stories or stories with air quotes around them? Uh, well, they're kind of stories with anecdotes, and uh, you know, they're meant to be funny stories. <laughs> Allegedly funny stories. <laughs> that's it. That's what the vodka's for. There we go. Yeah. For story time, have you got any exclusive tea, gossip, or any funny moments from DragCon this weekend? Um, I really don't. It was kind of, for me, it was pretty tame. Like, I really, nothing, nothing went wrong. Everything was good. I didn't have any drama at my booth. I mean, I know there was drama at DragCon that I had nothing to do with. But I enjoy drag drama that I have nothing to do with that I can just sit back and watch. Yeah. Like I, that, that's the kind of drama I like. <laughs> no, that is that is always the best it, thing where you just sit there and you're like, I'm so glad I'm not involved in all this rubbish. Yeah, that's why I don't want to talk about the drama with a certain queen. 
<laughs> but if you follow any social medias, you've probably seen it because she's been posting a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, now this is the thing. I'm going to get told off by the guys for this, okay? Because uh, me and you have something dramatically in common and it's clear on the album. But rumour has it that you're a bit of a sci-fi nerd. <laughs> Do you have any favourite shows at the moment? Um, You know, I... Well, it's not... It's coming back with the season two, but I really like Silo, mm. uh, which is based on a book series, uh, Wool by Hugh Howie, I think. And I read the books, and I love the books. And the series does a really great job with that. That's quite good. Because the the problem we seem to have, like the problem we had with like Halo, was that they just went, and The Witcher and stuff, where they're like, oh, cool, let's just deviate from the source material. And uh, Yeah, no, Silo really like sticks with the book. And I now it makes me want to go back and read the book to see how... I mean, you can't put everything from a book into... Well, certainly not a movie, but mm. a TV series gives you a little more leeway because you have more time. Yeah. But I like that. I'm, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Uh, I like Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Yeah, and I wrote a song Stars on the album, which is... Uh, <laughs> it's, well, that's why I ask, because I'm just like going, this is a less subtle <laughs> reference to Star Trek. You know? <laughs> oh, no, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty obvious that it is... <laughs> What did you think of the musical episode of Strange New Worlds, like the pinnacle of season two? I loved it. I wow. thought it was a really clever way to do a musical uh, episode. And when Spock starts singing, I was like, I wasn't ready for this, but I'm here <laughs> for it. Yeah, that's it. it I, I was genuinely one of those people who was like, this isn't going to work. You know, and like no no one can capture the the magic of Buffy, I think. And then... It really, really did, which was quite strange. But uh, no, I'm off to loads of uh, Star Trek conventions uh, this year because I do another podcast that's a Star Trek the- uh, uh, themed show. And yeah, that's it's quite interesting sort of getting to meet like sort of people that you wouldn't expect who are also Trekkies. And it's wonderful. Yeah, I never, I've never been to a Star Trek convention, which I'm thinking now I'm like, oh, I probably should go. But uh <laughs> But I did, I've gone to the Doctor Who convention, Gallifrey, one that's here in, in the States, and that was fun. But I did actually get to meet Michelle Nichols, who played the original Uhura on Star wow. Trek at a Gallifrey convention, and that was um, crazy. Like, I don't even, I could barely speak. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, I just threw money. I was like, can I get a picture with her? And he, the guy, her handler pointed at the sign of the prices and kind of looked at me like, well, they're right here. And I just took money and was like, what did just take all of it? <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> I was like, it's Sahura. Well, that, that's the joy of fandom, isn't it? Like, it's this idea of like, sort of, I've got a press pass for uh, an upcoming event, but I'm like, I will happily pay if I can't actually meet my heroes. I'll be like, no, just take my money, take my money. I, I need to meet like yeah. Andrew Robinson and like Armin Shimmerman and stuff. Yeah. Right. But um, so... On the theme of sci-fi, though, like, out of all of this, like, Trek, everything, Silo, like, who is your favorite sci-fi character? Oh, that's <laughs> hard. But I guess I would, I'm thinking Princess Leia, really. That's, like, an icon from, like, childhood. And uh, But, you know, I do love the Doctor and, you know, his various, uh, his or her various yeah. incarnations. I mean, does that count as one character or many characters? Like a lot of regenerations worth of characters. Yeah, there's similarities in in he, the character. I mean, I mean, I feel like there has to be some consistency, but it's 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 a brilliant thing that they uh, created that character to have regenerations because that's a part of the reason it's been able to last for decades. I was going to say they kind of rehash the Doctor because you had like the War Doctor. Uh, who was number 11, and then Shuey Gatwick was actually more of a camp charismatic doctor with a bit more passion. Hmm. The, the, yeah, the... I haven't watched the new season yet, but because I'm catching my husband up because he was behind, so we're going through and we're doing a rewatch of Doctor Who. Oh, I love that. I love that. You, you know, he, he's just like, what have I got myself into? And you're like, right, sit down. You need an education. Yeah, we just... Yeah, he used to watch it. Then at some point, like, I started watching it without him. And so now we're almost up to Jodie uh, Whittaker, so. Amazing. <laughs> then we can watch the new ones. <laughs> yeah, you're catching up quite quickly. That's pretty impressive. Are you just sort of spending a good solid few hours binge-watching it effectively? Yeah, we'll watch, like, maybe two or three episodes. 
It's a good choice. It's a good way to get through a season. Uh, if so, speaking of sort of sci-fi characters, if you were ever going to do like a sort of drag cosplay of a sci-fi villain, who would you go to for it? Which would be your ultimate villain? Oh, um, you know, rewatching Doctor Who, I really like Missy a lot. So I kind of was looking at her costume, and I was like, hmm, that would be fun to do. How she's totally reinvented the master, like the idea of just going, yeah, actually, this might yeah. be my favorite version of the master ever. And her character in uh, Chilean Adventures of Sabrina, like, she was brilliant oh, in so that, good. too. Yeah, so, so good. I mean, she's amazing. I think the weirdest thing is that that actress started off as a comedy actress. Like, the strange, you know, like, we, uh, what was it? Because it was a Green Wing that I remember her from. And it was a really silly character. And then you just like, and now she's renowned for playing these really hard-edged chilling villains and i love it <laughs> wow yeah i mean I, there's oh, there still is a sense of you can tell there's a sense of comedy in some of it because she she adds a little comedy flair to her evil villains <laughs> well only she could nearly get off with herself in an episode <laughs> <laughs> if you can't love yourself <laughs> <laughs> you're also a bit of a gamer what keeps your fingers busy at night <laughs> <laughs> when you've turned the doctor who off <laughs> oh wow um <laughs> i'm kind of like i've there's uh i've been playing disney's dreamlight valley that's my my one game because it's kind of like it's like an animal crossing it's it's very they're called cozy games which i i like the name of that because there's it's not too much drama and it kind of like takes me away from everything and then i just walk around my village and you know talk to all these disney characters <laughs> it sounds amazing wow. i've never heard of it is it is it like kingdom hearts where it brings all of the different disney characters together it is like that but you don't but it's kind of just like you have a house and then you can build on it and you have little tasks that you do to get things and yeah, and then you become friends with uh, all the villagers. So <laughs> not as intense as Kingdom Hearts, which is a great game. It, it sounds really, really cute, to be fair. Like, I totally missed the boat on stuff like, um, like you're saying, Animal Crossing and whatnot. And even I missed the boat on bloody Harvest Moon, and that was years ago. Uh, but it's the idea of, like, I could probably get into that now and be like, okay, cool, let's, let's get a Switch. Would you ever consider, like, how to phrase this, like, working Pandora into a game? Like, you know, potentially as a camp hero or a, a very camp villain. Yeah, I actually was in a game. It was called Dragopolis and it was like years ago and it, they had uh, drag queens in it. And you were like a little like a uh, side scrolling game where, where I, I had like, I think I was fighting villains or something and oh. you had like a sword. So I did the voiceover for it and um, it was an app. I don't even know if it still exists anymore, but it was really fun to do. I was like, oh my god, I'm in a video game, you guys. <laughs> I, I, th I think you should do more of it because it's like, you know, that sounds, that sounds really, really fun, to be fair. And like, I, I think that's where a lot of people are bizarrely finding sort of, you know, like the, a, a, an additional way is in sort of like voiceovers and stuff like that. Like, it's been great seeing like queens like Jinx Monsoon being like, oh, wow, voice acting's really fun and stuff. It's, it's definitely an avenue. Yeah. I would, I mean, I absolutely would love to do that. So if anyone's listening, this is not normally how my voice sounds, but you can hire me. <laughs> I did, uh, I did get, I was going to be this voice of uh, something like an AI or, or in this game, but then the game kind of lost funding. So that was kind of sad that it didn't actually kind of, it didn't happen. Yeah, I think that's the scariest thing, though, where it's like, you know, so many, there's so many projects that are really good that just never happen. And everyone's so used to only seeing like things that are actually released that they, they don't get to see all of these amazing ideas that people had and all these things that got so far. And then the funding stops or the studio drops it and it never sees the light of day. Yeah. And it's, it's a shame. Yeah, trust me, I could give you a, a list of the projects that I was excited for that ended up not happening. <laughs> Well, speaking of games, I think it's about time that we had a little game of our own. And this is going to be strange for us because, we, you know, you two have been doing uh, Girl Talk, like our smaller version of the show, while I've been really busy this year, even if I still popped on for one of them, which uh, broke the whole point of the show, really, like me being on the spin-off show without me. Uh, but 
so it's quite fun getting back to this. But yeah, so are you okay to play a little game with us, Pandora? Um, sure. I mean, I can't be eliminated, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And and maybe I'm first isn't here either. So it's a. Uh... <laughs> and you might win a badge this time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we're going we're keeping with tradition um every time we do the main season of the podcast we always do a little game um i say we i mean me and then i force people to play it so um we're gonna theme it as usual around the guests so this week's game is called what's in pandora's box <laughs> um and because we're all nerds here it's gonna be sci-fi and horror themed hey uh, Ooh. so the rules will be, in turn, I will describe either an object, a person, or a creature from something sci-fi or horror-based, and your job is, in one guess, to tell me who or what that is. Yeah, I know. Excuse first. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I know that if this was in person, this would be one of those ones where you have to put your hands in the box and feel around and be like, oh, it's a creepy crawly <laughs> or something. That's what this feels like. Uh, but yeah, yeah that, I, that's what people do to me all the time. But yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> when they get a hand in the box, <laughs> I actually just text nice. Pandora. I was like, "What? What do you want to do tonight?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, do a box-based thing." So <laughs> yeah. fits, fits with the theme. Um, I chose to pick on Velvet this week. Oh God! Um, Yay! I'll get I'm just idea, back. <laughs> I'm literally. I'm just. I've just got back off the plane, and you're just like, right, go on. You. You cannot be on another podcast which is nerd themed and not expect to do the nerdy drag competition. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, uh, I I fully accept this challenge. Uh, I hope I don't embarrass myself with being terrible. <laughs> I I hope you do. Uh, so we'll go with guest first. So the question is just for one of you. Velvet has no chance at guessing it, um, so she can't steal a point or anything like that. We keep things nice and fair. It is a democracy. By which I mean, I choose the rules. Just using that word, and I don't think you know what it means. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> so, Pandora, your first one, um, and I will warn you in advance, some of these are purposely sexual. Um, I'm smooth up top with a phallic-shaped head. My teeth are sharp and pointy, and I'll make you scream, but nobody will hear it. What am I? Um, an alien? Like from the movie Aliens? Correct. Oh. Xenomorph. Because oh. they do look a bit like a penis with teeth. Yeah, I was like, but they do have a name. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, that well I can't read. Thank you. <laughs> you got it though. You got it. It's, I think as soon as you hit aliens, it then clicks because I I had to think about it before I did that one. <laughs> okay, Velvet, are you ready? No. Nope. If you don't get this one, by the way, I think multiple people are going to fire you from your place. <laughs> so my hair may be cut with a bowl, and my ears point to the heavens, but my salute is iconic and my crew legendary. Who am I? Uh, of course, you are Spock. I am Spock. <laughs> So I like this game. This is it's like, fun, what? right? <laughs> I, just, I just love that you can just be like any answer. You're like, nope, it's your mum. So <laughs> <laughs> I should probably do that. Okay, this one might be slightly harder, I think. Um, so Pandora, I'm sweet. I bounce back and I look good in a hat, but don't try and toast me or I'll get real angry. Oh. My mom? <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, that one was the step of marshmallow man. I, I was gonna say i was literally uh, like is... oh yeah that I, makes sense i was like is it yeah. kirby is it the step of marshmallow man i was just like that's really tough but yeah toasting the, the, I was... the, toast, the toasty thing was the sort of little hint <laughs> yeah. i was singing a gremlins until a toasty thing and i was like oh. that, uh, that, no, i yeah, would have that... i would have definitely made a wet joke for that one i i believe that's a blender in that particular movie Claire. <laughs> <laughs> okay well velvet see if you can uh take over i think you'll enjoy this one uh a lovely shaft and then what's this it can be extended and it lights up who's your father now <laughs> what am i the 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 urge to deliberately get this one wrong <laughs> is, you know, for, for the sake of comedy like to take a dive for comedy um could you repeat the question please <laughs> A lovely shaft, yeah. and what's this? It can be extended, and it lights up. Who's your father now? So it's either 
Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader, but Jedi. <laughs> it's it, it's or Sith. not a person. It's not a person. Oh, lightsaber. There you go. Okay. Oh, I, I thought it was just people. I didn't realize it was inanimate objects. No, no, no. Well. No, it can be anything related to sci-fi. Okay. It is a lightsaber. Though. <laughs> Excellent. So, Pandora, you've got to get this one right to not be eh, eliminated eaten by velvet, basically. <laughs> no eliminations. You will. You're welcome to stay, but you won't win. So, <laughs> just like all stars. Well, what happens is, if uh, I win, you get to boot me out an airlock for the insult. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, it's like a jelly bean, but for adults. And there's two of them. I don't want to be left feeling blue, though. So, I think the choice is clear. Oh, it, uh, the pills in the Matrix. Correct. Maybe. Oh. What? Correct. <laughs> Yay. Because there was a red and a blue pill, and I didn't want to be left feeling blue. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the that, pill, that's terrible, Stu. <laughs> yeah, the red pill takes you. I, like, Pand- I can't remember which one is the one. Yeah. Pandora got it, though, so yeah, it yeah. can't be that bad. <laughs> yeah, it. okay. Velvet, for the win, I guess. And for the, to be the first time you've ever got everything correct, I think. This is a short one. <laughs> well, I don't know how I deal with short ones, actually. <laughs> okay, so your final question is, I like fast cars, but my time management isn't great, and I do have daddy issues. Who am I? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having so much fun just being like, what the hell, Stu? What is this? Okay, um, I that don't know. hard. The problem is, because it can be anything, it's got, and I've got daddy issues, I'm like... Oh. It's it's a person. Oh, it's a person. Okay. And, it's, I, and I, it's sci-fi or horror themed. Daddy issues. Uh, so I like oh, Fast I think I've got it. I, I, I've I was going to say the De- DeLorean, but is it Marty McFly? It is Marty McFly. Okay, no. Oh, I would have got it wrong. So, okay. Who did you think it was? The guy, um, Star-Lord. Oh, it could be, oh. actually. I don't think he does well, time. I don't think he goes through time, does he? Or fast cars. Or fast cars. Yeah, we like. He's got spaceships. He's got daddy issues. Like the no, second I mean, bloody film. We've, we've all got daddy issues. Let's be real. <laughs> no, you've got daddies. That's it's a difference. Damn it, um, <laughs> Glenn. Who who won that one? In case we didn't already know. Um, it is the one, the only. Velvet Snap. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Well done. I get to win something this year. Yay! You, you do. <laughs> But on this podcast, nobody goes home empty-handed, so you will still be sent a custom Stu Peter badge. Um, it'll just be the silver version rather than the gold version. So I'm hard. genuinely shocked that anyone got that question, that uh, blue pill question, <laughs> Pandora. I'm like, I, I got that one no too, idea. Yeah, yeah I, I was proud of that one. Um, so we do have a winner, but do we want to do my tiebreaker as usual, just for a laugh? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So, with this one, um, because it would be almost impossible to try and make one of those little riddles up and get you both to shout at me, um, it's just kind of a number-based one that I've tried to word in a way that sort of matches the game. Um, so you'll each get one guess, and the closest guess wins as normal. Um, I am the population sign for the town of Harlow in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What number do I show? Be, is this before or after the massacre? Uh, this is the <laughs> introductory image into the 2022 variant. Oh, God. <laughs> the one, yeah, I, just the get, one I'm too old to have seen. You're just guessing a population of a small town in a horror movie, basically. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... What I'm going to do, I'm going to be... Um... I'm going to be conservative about this, which makes a change. Uh, I'm going to go with one. <laughs> Hey, Pandora, can you beat one? <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking it's uh, a thousand something, like a thousand eighty. You are much closer than one, so you get the non-existent tiebreaker point. Hey. Technically, then, then you're level, so you should both get a gold badge. Yeah, right? technically. I, th- I think Pandora's stolen the win here, but I just... What a rubbish massacre. Like, I'm just, Look, you know, I'm, not, the- no, I'm, I'm sending Leatherface a card and just being like, <laughs> must try harder. <laughs> This was pre-massacre, so it shows you the level of people in the town before. Uh, the answer was 1974, by the way, which was a reference to when the original movie came out, oh. just to be extra nerdy about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is my game, and I actually quite like that game. It's I don't know if I can do anything better than that this season. <laughs> I did enjoy the poems. Mm-hmm. Thank you. 
that my uh, my new book is coming out whenever I can be asked to write it. <laughs> no, thank you so much for taking part in that, Pandora. But yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so, obviously, uh, it has been absolutely wonderful chatting to you, Pandora. Is there anything that you'd like to mention or promote uh, before we go? Um, just... Uh, listen, buy my album box. If you like it, leave a nice review. If you didn't like it, don't tell me. I don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> are you looking to get a... Because you are going on tour, aren't you? Um, Yeah, hopefully. So if anyone would like to book me, I'm available. <laughs> UK, UK, UK. <laughs> oh, I would love to. Yeah. So see if you can bully them into um, DragCon UK uh, next year and stuff. And then you're like, oh, well, while, I, while I'm here... Yeah, maybe I can. That'd be great. Right. Thought of Stu, do you have anything that you'd like to promote? I actually don't think I have a lot to promote just yet at the start of the season. Um, so I'm just going to promote continuing to support Girl Global and listening to our podcast. Um, as always, support anyone that we interact with. We interact with them because they're fantastic. So go and give them some love. And there is now becoming more regular stuff on our website. Um, there's lots of interviews and stuff on there with different people around the world. So just go and have a look at that. And um, be queer, encourage crime against horrible people. <laughs> You've changed it up a bit there. <laughs> yeah, like crime. A, that sounds like a lawyer got involved. <laughs> yeah. A lawyer may or may not have contacted me and told me not to say be gay, do crime anymore. So <laughs> allegedly, you, it, it's like on it's YouTube. Trademarked. You've got to yell allegedly, and it makes it all fine. It's great. Oh, uh, <laughs> and Jim Bunny Glenn, anything that you'd like to promote? Um, I did launch my fabulous sewing page. That's underscore so gl- underscore Glenn. Uh, so is spelled S-E-W. So please go and give me some love and follow my mission to become a chief sewer. Um, if this is the BBC, I am open to sewing bay. Um, it'll be questionable. I, I've heard you described as open generally, Glenn. <laughs> That's just my legs. <laughs> only on his only on his CV and grinder. <laughs> I am yes, that's what I am open from the waist down. Uh... <laughs> open for bookings. Anyway, um, I I have no idea what I have to promote. I'm I'm in that thing where I have too much stuff to promote at the minute, so I'm just kind of not going to say anything. Anything. I'm going to say go to the Velvet Snatch.com and you can uh, check in on my fundraising, all of the events and stuff that I'm doing. And yeah, and also if you are interested in finding out about the uh, Star Trek podcast that I do, go to trekking, as in T R E K K I N, upnorth.com. And you can listen on Spotify and YouTube for that. And if you're at any of the Trek conventions, see if we're there. Oh, I've got one thing to promote Uh-oh. again. Oh. I've got to promote the Velvet Smat Snatch for her campaign right. for the, MX Drag The Velvet Britain. Smatch. <laughs> the Velvet Smatch. Is that like where you yeah. clone me and it comes out wrong? And it's like, oh, it's, no, it's, that's it's when it comes out right. Be, it's me committing identity theft. <laughs> Where's that lawyer? No. They need to be supporting you, Velvet, for your com- campaign for MX Drag Great, Great Britain. Britain. 2024. Whoa, whoa. So get that picture liked of Velvet and one like is one vote. There we go. There we go. I'm glad someone did that. But no. And buy some freaking merchandise. Oh, yeah. Store.thevelvetsnatch.com. Anyway, thank you so much, Pandora, for being on this episode. It was really good. And thank you for indulging me and letting me be really nerdy with you. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for having me. I had a great time. Oh, brilliant. You're welcome back anytime. Right. And all of you bastards listening. Listen to the album. <laughs> Go and get Pandora Box's <laughs> album, Box. If, if you forget that, if you can't remember that Pandora Box's album is called Box, like, I'm taking your phone away. I'm, I'm confiscating your phone. I'm uninstalling Grindr. I'm... <laughs> you're, not, you're not allowed online anymore. Get yeah. off the internet. <laughs> but no, okay, how are we going to sign out today? I don't know. Should we just try this new thing where you sign off? <laughs> well, well, I just leave. I just go, right. See ya. Bye. Well, what we'll do is, we'll, how about on the count of three, we just say bye. Go on, okay. we'll try it. Okay, we'll try it. It, it never works. It never. It, the delay over the internet means it's always weird. But that's hilarious. How crap we are. Okay, cool. So, oh well. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and listening. And you will catch us on the next episode of Girl. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>